Are you a fan of the Mad World series, but have absolutely no idea what's going on? Well, that would make two of us. So what I've done, <laughs> so what I've done is made an official Mad World mod pack, now available on the Steam Workshop. I figured after posting the Ligma mod, I should probably do something useful with the CK2 mod uh, workshop here. So what I've done is I've put this together. Should make it very easy for you to copy my uh, mod list, but of course, as I've mentioned before, there are some tweaks that need to be done. I've mentioned it in the description as well. There are videos available up on the channel. Links to all of this are available in the description. Here is a brief overview. So what I'm going to be doing with this video is going through every single mod, discussing why I like them, why they're in the mod pack, why they're, you know, mods I would recommend personally, things like that, and what features they offer to the Mad World series. If you're interested, stay tuned. If not, links are below. At the top, we have a revolutionary borders mod. So this is a very simple, straightforward mod that makes the CK2 borders look a lot neater. And as you can tell from the first two screenshots here, you can very much tell the difference. We have the vanilla CK2 borders here, very thick, very heavy borders. And revolutionary borders will make them a lot thinner, a lot neater, and a lot nicer to look at. And quite simply, I've never played a game without it. It's also Iron Man compatible. For those of you who are interested, you can play this without affecting the checksum, which means you can still get achievements playing the game. Next up is a revolutionary waters mod, which adjusts the appearance of all the water on the map, makes it look a lot darker, and as it says there, calmer. I'm not sure how it affects the performance of CK2. If you're playing on a particularly like low specs PC, there is a mod called Flat Map, uh, and there is also a Flat Water mod. I'd recommend that instead. This is just if you want a bit more graphical fidelity with the game. One of my favourite mods here, and one that we've showcased in pretty much every series, is the Artifact Acquisition mod. Now, I'm using the variant of the Artifact Acquisition mod that only adds the stealing aspect of things. The actual full mod includes a lot of extra artifacts, things like that, but it requires a lot more compatibility work to get it working with Mythos and CK2+, and Vlogi's Tech mod, and all the other artifact mods that we've got enabled. So, right now, I just generally go for this one for maximum compatibility. This allows you to go on a big event chain, uh, a targeted decision, as it says there, against AI, which, or other players, it actually does work in multiplayer, um, allows you to go on this big event chain, and based on your stats, your traits, and who you take with you, you get to... Uh, have a chance at stealing an artifact. Now, the event can be very difficult, but obviously in Mythos 2 and CK2+, Plus, we get all these traits, all these events to buff up your character. If you have an immortal character as well, it can get very easy. Uh, maybe a little bit overpowered. I found the balance is pretty good, though, when you're sort of playing it kind of close to the base game uh, CK2 stats. And this mod, as it says in the description, that does require some extra work with dependencies. I put up a video on this uh, explaining how to do it with Mythos. It's the same type of work that you have to do for that. Next up we have Artifact Search, and in my opinion Artifacts were one of the best things added by Jade Dragon? That's not true, they were added by the one before that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. More to the point, this allows you to actually look for Artifacts much more effectively. So as the mod states, and one of my biggest goals with CK2, the base game CK2, to find an Artifact in game you have to type it case perfect, perfect spelling, things like that, the full word, uh, as these screenshots demonstrate. What this actually does is it adds a trait to any characters with a rare artifact. Now what that, oh, well, or a regular artifact, well, but you can type in rare artifact to actually find specifically rare artifacts. What you can do for there, is if you're looking for, say, artifacts specifically of your religion, it's obviously set in the character finder, only characters of your religion, at which point it allows you to track down all these rare artifacts, see what's spawned in, a lot, lot better. This should be base game. There's no question about it. This is an incredible mod, and I pretty much don't play without it anymore. Bigger Interface is a mod that was very sort of divisive for me for quite a long time. So what it does is it essentially makes it so that the interface uses a lot more of the screen space available to it. As you can see, it differs greatly from base game CK2. It gives you a lot more information at once, especially now that we're in sort of post J Dragon CK2. There are a lot of decisions in the game. There are a lot of sub-menus. You want to be able to see more information, and, and the base game interface doesn't provide it. This is very good if you're playing with a 1080p monitor. There are also versions available for larger monitor sizes, so 1440p. Not sure if there's 4K or anything like that. I wouldn't expect there to be, but I find this is perfectly good enough. There is also a mod called Somewhat Bigger Interface. If you think this is too big, there's a nice halfway point between base game and this one, which uses up as much screen space as it possibly can. Definitely recommended. Took a while to grow on me, though, but now that I'm used to it, I definitely wouldn't be able to go back. Now, this is a mod that recently came out. The Morky Genital Traits mod is actually a recreation of a an older mod, actually, which we used in the Game of Thrones mod that adds tiered levels of congenital traits. So, in the base game, obviously, you have uh, nothing, then quick, then uh, genius. And those are sort of that, that's sort of that scale. And obviously, from the opposite end, you've also got imbecile and uh, slow. What this does is it fills in the gaps between those traits. So, you might have, uh, at the very, very top, you would have... Brilliant, 
which gives plus six to all stats, but obviously it's very, very rare. You would also have things like smart, which gives plus two to all stats, which just kind of fills the gap between nothing and quick. It's very, very cool. And at this really cool tiered approach, you find characters having a lot more varied stats. You get a lot more of a varied playstyle because you get random traits appearing a lot more as well, just because there are so many more traits. It also adds some uh, traits that you see in CK2 Plus as well. So agile, fertile, tall, um, ambidextrous, things like that. Very, very good. If you're playing with CK2 Plus, I'd highly recommend this mod. In fact, there's a version for it for just about every mod. There's one for after the end. Game of Thrones, I said before, we've used it in that. Highly recommended. Great mod. So this mod is an absolute minefield. This is Custom Rule Bloodline, and it's an incredible mod. It's very, very good, and it's actually a mod they're adding to the base game in the next version of CK2 in, uh, in, in whatever it's called. Holy Fury. There we go. In Holy Fury, they're actually adding a specific interface for this and different ways of tracking bloodlines and, and obviously different effects they give you. This is... Essentially, a mod that when you get 4,000 prestige, it allows you to create a bloodline, which is a trait inherited by your descendants that eventually waters down over time to sort of show that your bloodline is becoming, you know, less and less of a descendant of this particular individual. Uh, it's very, very good. However, as I started this by saying, it is a minefield of a mod. There can be a lot of conflicts, in particular in the Game of Thrones series, with their equivalent bloodline mod. Any children born to your character, or at least what I found, they were just coming out bastards every single time. So, there are some issues associated with it, but it is a very, very good mod. Again, set your dependencies correctly, and you should be good with this mod. Decisive Battles. This is a mod that's... How do I describe it? It's something more for the old CK2 players, as you can see there. Posted 28th of May, updated 27th of August 2016. So, this is a two-year-old mod at this point. It reverts the battle system to what it used to be prior to patch 2.5. So, that's like three expansions ago now. The way expansions work when Shattered Retreat was added was a lot of people would survive battles. So, if 25,000 men fought 24,000 men, you would expect, you know, just based, say, let's say they were all light infantry, for example, you would expect the 25,000 men to win just based on numbers, and you would expect a lot of people to die, probably on both sides. Unfortunately, the way it changed after 2.5 is that a lot of troops survived, like, way more troops survived. The death rate plummeted, um, so that... You would be able to shatter a tree, rebuild your forces, try again. Battles became a lot more drawn out. Warfare in CK2 is not something that's particularly overcomplicated. It can be if you make it, but really, bigger numbers beat bigger numbers. Cavalry beat infantry, that type of thing. So, in my opinion, Decisive Battles is, is, is good, but I can understand why people wouldn't like it. As, as, a, as an older CK2 player, I definitely prefer it, but this might not be your particular cup of tea, I think. Flogie's Building and Tech Mod, one of my favourite mods, unfortunately has no compatibility with things like HIP, Game of Thrones, things like that. Because of its extensive trade route system it adds in based on province IDs, unfortunately you can't use it with anything but uh, the base game map. There are some compatibility patches for CK2+, Plus, things like that, if you need it. I believe there is a compatibility patch for HIP, but don't mark my word on that. Um, not sure. Anyway, to get this working with CK2+, Plus, I have put up a video on this as well. You have to delete some pre-existing building files, otherwise the buildings just won't work. You get the trade route aspect of things, but CK2 Plus will take priority because it loads first because of CK2's arbitrary method of loading mods. This is an incredible mod. It adds so many more buildings. It adds so much to the trade routes. adds a lot of events, lots of cool um, building types. So rather than just get building that give tax or troops, you actually give them that give stats, uh, that give events, things like that. Incredible mod, one of my favorites. Historical and fantastical artifacts adds a lot of uh, what you'd expect, you know, historical and sort of mythical artifacts, things like, as I was just about to say, Excalibur, the Mask of Toot and Carmoon, swords, that type of things. I think, you know, Joy, which is Charlemagne's sword, is added by this mod. Very, very cool. Um, might be a little bit immersion breaking for those of you who like your map simulator to be a hard historical map simulator where you can sit and sip tea and pretend that you're uh, cooler than you actually are. This is a really good mod though. It's very well made, it adds a lot of artifacts and I really like the artifact system if you haven't guessed already. I think some things are best left not spoken about. Interface Century Gothic is a uh, font mod basically that's Iron Man compatible that allows you to change the base CK2 font to the font Century Gothic, which is a sans serif font so it's a lot easier to read, a lot more spacing, a lot more bold text. If you're playing on a smaller screen, something like that, this would be definitely the mod for you. I just prefer it because I think it looks like a nicer, clearer font. You get information better. What's not to like? Alongside that is interface Stellaris colors. So the, the color scheme for Stellaris, the palette for it, is a lot darker than base game Secret 2. As you can tell here, um, it, it's a lot neater, I would say. 
against particular backgrounds, if you're playing with uh, tooltip mods, Velvet, tooltip, Crimson, tooltip, this is a very good mod. I just feel like the text looks a lot nicer, removes a lot of the paleness around it, a lot of the contrasting colours, and makes it, again, much, much clearer to read. If you're playing with the Century Goth Gothic interface, which we just talked about, it looks a lot, lot nicer, you've got to admit. Or at least, I personally think it looks a lot, lot nicer. Again, this is Iron Man compatible, this is an optional mod, so if you don't want things like this, don't worry about it too much. Mythos 2, Historical Fantasy. This is the mod that adds the gods. How many times have I seen that comment? Probably hundreds at this point, and I don't even think that's too much of an exaggeration. This adds your vampires, your gods, your dragons, your werewolves, all those cool things that we have been seeing in the uh, in the Mad World mod pack, obviously. A lot of things we haven't seen. I'm hearing a lot of cool things from my Discord chat about, you know, zombie plagues and things like that, which I'd like to see. Hopefully we'll see some soon. Again, a lot of compatibility issues with CK2 Plus here. I, I put up a full video guide on how to get this and CK2 Plus working. A little bit more advanced for those of you who haven't really touched CK2 modding before. Not too difficult though. Just a case of deleting some files here and there, setting some dependencies. Very straightforward. As long as you've got a notepad, you can do it. Childhood is probably one of the worst parts of CK2. How many times does it happen that you're playing as, you know, your classic 30-year-old CK2 ruler and you die in a tragic but hilarious satanic accident and you're left playing as the two-year-old girl for the next 14 years? What I would recommend is this mod being added to the base game because it really is necessary. This mod is incredibly good. It gives you a lot more to do when you're a child because obviously you can't really manage your realm. You can't go to war because your council needs to approve it or your regent needs to approve it all. This gives you something to do. It gives you a way of shaping your character when, quite frankly, you're in probably a pretty bad situation if you're a child. You know, more susceptible to plots, less things you can do, very underpowered ruler by all means. This gives you a lot of ways to direct what character you want to play as. And it gives you a reason to play out those 16 years, not on speed 5, like I do. So, really, really good. Recently added back to the mod pack. I removed it for a bit because I was having some compatibility issues, but I put it back. And hopefully we'll see some things crop up from this in the series. Now, University is a mod we haven't actually seen in Mythos, uh, sorry, in the Mad World mod pack. Mainly because it wasn't in the Mad World mod pack until I re-noticed it going through the mods this morning. Uh, this is a mod I first tried out when it actually originally came out. Uh, on 18th of March, I would assume. Um, I remember it hitting the Steam Workshop and trying it immediately. It's very, very cool. So essentially it allows you to do something similar to the Game of Thrones mod where you send your heir away to a university to study. They come back with, with you know, traits. It costs you gold. You get cool events, things like that. This is something we're going to test out during the, uh, during the upcoming episode. I think this is really cool. And I think it's very well made. And you get to go to different universities. And you get to found universities. Lots of different books. Artifacts. You know how much I love artifacts. Novus Graphicus is more or less an alternative to some of the mods I've talked about before. So, you know, uh, the Borders mod, the Water mod. It changes the way the terrain appears. It changes the way the map looks much, much cleaner. If you like a clean map, Novus Graphicus might be the mod for you because it looks very, very nice. Very out of date. It does still work. Um, look at these borders, though. That looks really, really neat. And again, if this is the type of thing where you play on terrain map mode because you're apparently you're a friggin' psychopath, this might be the mod for you. I personally don't use it in the series because, again, I'm using Revolutionary Borders, Revolutionary Water. I put this in because it is an Iron Man-friendly alternative that I used to play with all the time. Very great mod. Mod and Other Traits is a well-polished, nice-looking trait mod. Uh, I do like a good polished mod, and this is definitely an example of one of them. Add some events around the traits. Doesn't overbloat it. You know, it doesn't have 64 really crappily made mods. It just adds six really nicely made mods. Um, obviously, the Savant trait is probably a more balanced equivalent of the Brilliant trait from the Congenital Overhaul mod. Gives you plus six in all your stats, but it also gives you a Vassal Opinion negative. So that, uh, or a Malice to Vassal Opinion, I should say. Um, just to balance that out somewhat. Very, very good mod. The administrative traits might be a little bit underbalanced, I would say. Maybe needs a little bit of tweaking here and there because the Vassal Administrator is very, very overpowered. Plus 10 to Vassal Opinion for just a random event pop-up is very, very strong. You do get the option of changing your rulerships as well, depending on your gameplay style. It's, it's really cool, and I would definitely recommend that a lot. Sketchy Traits for CK2+, Plus, as I've said in the mod pack description, is not a mod that would generally go if I was playing just base game CK2. Reason for that is there are a lot of uh, comedic traits, I'd say. It's not hugely polished. Like, um, I am a, I'm a bit of a, a weirdo when it comes to polish for mods. It's one of the reasons I've not really got too much into the Japan mod, just because the art for it is a little weird. The same thing applies to sketchy traits. So, the... It looks very out of place, and it looks a bit jarring. There's some weird traits like well-endowed and meagre, um, which don't really fit into a base game CK2 run, if that's the type of thing you're going for. Maybe you don't want your ruler to have a small dick. I'm not sure. Uh, but it doesn't really slot in very well to your sort of base game dynasty building map simulator. 
Although the traits themselves are very cool, and they're very well built. Maybe not too well balanced. Uh, minus 50% building time, as some of you would know, is is ridiculously overpowered. And will let you very early get to that one day build time modifier, which I've, which I've showed off quite a lot in the series. It's very good. It adds a lot of extra traits, but could do with just a tiny little bit more polish. And then I, I, I would sing its praises. The Great Trade League, the mod that I cannot pronounce... My favourite society mod of all time. One of my favourite mods of all time. It's so incredibly well built. There are so many events around it. There are so many good benefits around it. If you're playing a Republic, it's incredibly strong. Uh, not to the extent that it's overpowered, I would say. that Because there are as many good events for you, beneficial events, as there are bad events. And you have to sort of know what you're doing with it. That it offers uh, unique alternatives to base game systems, such as artifact crafting. And I think it really fleshes out a, a big market, a, a big gap in the market for base game CK2 societies there, no pun intended. Which is, if you're playing with a Merchant Republic, if you're trying to play tall, what do you pick besides the Hermetic Society, realistically? This is really, really good. Again, one of my favourite mods, I've showcased it a huge amount in the Game of Thrones series. So if you're interested more in detail about this, go and have a look over there. I can't recommend this mod enough. The Orders of Chivalry by the same creator of the Great Trade League. Unfortunately, it's not a mod I have a huge amount of experience with. But, you know, just based on what I've seen with the League, I can already recommend it. Now, I have seen some of it. We did see a little bit of it towards the end of the Mad World series when we joined the uh, the Yom's Vikings or something like that. Um, adds a lot of martial-based events, funnily enough. Um, a lot of religious-based events as well. Fills that nice gap that exists in the base game for a martial-based society. And it also adds a shit ton of societies for every religion. Well, there are so many added by this. It's got an incredible amount of polish to it. Extra sound effects, extra interfaces. Again, I knocked it out of the park once again from the creator of the Great Trade League there. And finally, maybe the most important mod of all, the Tooltip mod. Just changes the colour of the Tooltip. I've been playing with Velvet Tooltip a lot, which is a more purple variation. Obviously, it's velvet coloured. Uh, this one is the Crimson Tooltip, which I figured I'd test out because I haven't really used it before and see which I prefer. Iron Man compatible, good text readability, especially if you're using those Stellaris coloured mods. It looks nice, and it's a pretty decent change from the base game. What else is there to say, really? That is the entire Mad World collection as it stands for today. Again, there are a lot of compatibility issues here. There are a lot of mods that overlap, particularly the trait mods, the artifact mods, the, the religion overhaul mods, things like that. I would recommend picking and choosing. Maybe not going for the entire mod pack as I've done because there is, like I said, a lot of work associated with trying to fix mods and get them to working together. If you want to try and tackle this the way I have, there are a lot of videos out there that I've put up personally to fix some mod compatibility, add dependencies, there are guides on that available. Take a look, I'll link them all in the description as well, they're also available obviously on the main channel page. Thank you for watching, I hope this answers a lot of questions people have had, and I hope we finally put that nail in the coffin of what mod adds to the gods, because if I see that mod again, I might actually scream. If I see that comment again, I might actually scream. I'm just going to scream in general.